Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nimikum. I'm Van Chen. In this class, I'll read all of you a part of. Will be Dick the Will. Yes. Oh. Moby Dick or the Whale Herman Melville Chapter 7 The Chapel In this same new bed for there stands a whaleman's chapel And few are the muddy fishermen Shortly bound for the Indian Ocean or Pacific Who fell to make a Sunday visit to this part I am sure that I did not Returning from my first morning stroll, I again sallied out upon this special errand. The sky had changed from clear, sunny cold, to driving sleet and mist. Wrapping myself in my shaggy jacket of the cloth cold bearskin, I fought my way against a stubborn storm. Entering, I found a small scattered congregation of sailors and sailors' wives and widows. A muffled silence reigned, only broken at times by the shrieks of the storm. Each silent worshipper seemed purposely sitting apart from the other, as if each silent grief were insular and incommunicable. The chaplain had not yet arrived. And there these silent islands of men and women sat stood fastly eyeing several marble tablets with black borders messened into the wall on the other side the pulpit. Three of them ran something like the following but I do not pretend to quote. sacred to the memory of John Talbot who at the age of 18 was lost overboard near the Isle of Desolation of Patagonia November 1st 1836 This tablet is erected to his memory by his sister sacred to the memory of Warbutlong Willis Ellery, Nathan Coleman, Walter Kenny, Seth Macy, and Samuel G. L. I. G. forming one of the boat's crews of the ship Eliza who were towed out of Psych by a well on the offshore ground in the Pacific. December 31st, 1839. This marble is here placed by their surviving shipmates, sacred to the memory of the they captain Ezekiel Hardy, who in the bows of his boat was sculled by a sperm whale on the coast of Japan, August 1833. This tablet is erected to his memory by his widow, shaking off the sleep from my ice glazed hat and jacket. I seated myself near the door and turning sideways was surprised to see Queek near me. Affected by the solemnity of the scene, there was a wandering gaze of incredulous curiosity in his countenance. This savage was the only person present who seemed to notice my entrance. because he was the only one who could not read and therefore was not reading those frigid inscriptions on the wall. Were there any of the relatives of the seamen whose names appeared there were now among the congregation? I knew not. But so many are the unrecorded accidents in the fishery and so plainly did several women present wear the countenance, if not the trappings of some unceasing grief, 
that I feel sure that here before me were assembled those in whose unhealing hearts the sight of those bleak tablets sympathetically caused the old wounds to bleed afresh. What? He whose dead lie buried beneath the green grass. Who's standing among flowers can say there. Here lies my beloved. You know not the desolation that broods in bosoms like these. What bitter banks in those black bordered marbles which cover no rushes. What despair in those immovable inscriptions. What deadly words and unbidden infidelities in the lines that seem to gnaw upon all. Faith. And refuse resurrections to the beings who have placelessly perished without a grave. As well might those tablets stand in the cave of Elephanta is there. In what census of living creatures? The dead of mankind are included. Why it is that a universal proverb says of them? That they tell no tales. Though containing more secrets than the good wing sends. How it is that to his name he yesterday departed for the other world. We prefix so significant and infidel a word. And yet do not thus entitle him. If he but embarks for the remotest indies of this living earth. Why the life insurance companies pay death for fitters upon immortals. In what eternal. And string paralysis and deadly, hopeless trends. Yet lies in take Adam who died 60 round centuries ago. How it is that we still refuse to be comforted for those who we nevertheless maintain our dwelling in unspeakable bliss. Why all the living so strive to hush all the dead. Wherefore, but the rumour of a knocking in a tomb will terrify a whole city. All these things are not without their meanings. That faith, like a jackal, feeds among the tombs, and even from these dead doubts she gathers her most vital hope. It needs scarcely to be told. With what feelings? On the eve of an Antarctic voyage, I regarded those marble tablets, and by the murky light of that darkened, doleful day read the fate of the whaleman who had gone before me. S. Ishmael. The same fate may be thine. But somehow I grew merry again. Delightful inducements to mark. Find chance for promotion. It's in J. A stove boat will make me an immortal by brevet. S. There is death in this business of wailing a speechlessly chaotic bundling of a man into eternity. But what then? Methinks we have hugely mistaken this matter of life and death. Methinks that what they call my shadow here on earth is my true substance. Methinks that in looking at things spiritual, we are too much like oysters observing the sun through the water, and thinking that thick water the thinnest of air. Methinks my body is but the lees of my better being. In fact, take my body who will. Take it, I say. It is not me. And therefore, three cheers for an intricate. And come a stove boat and stove body when they will. For stay my soul.
Chauvin Silk Canat. To be continued.